our natural food. If you start walking a little bit backwards, let me describe how you do this. Because like, we're not gonna do it tomorrow, are we? Like I'm not doing it, I want to do it. It's a process. Who did the, who went from a standard American diet to like a raw food diet? So you know that you went through a process. It's a process, even if you're like, no, I did it overnight. Yeah, well, you learned some hard lessons over the course of those months <laughs> because you don't do it overnight, even if you think you did. It took months to even start to figure out how to find even a balance in it. We're in the same position here. Here's what we do. You go to your supermarket, and you're in the produce section, and you start looking around for what's the most heirloom stuff. That makes sense? Who's gone to a farmer's market? Mm -hmm. You go to the farmer's market, and you look at the carrots, and are they like the ones in the store? They're different, right? And they look better, right? And they're smaller, and they're different colors, and they have some energy in them. Is that a better choice? Yeah. yeah, it is a better choice. You go to your supermarket, and you have the choice between lettuce and dandelion. What's the, more, what's the better choice? Yeah, you're looking at lettuces. You have the choice between iceberg and romaine. You guys have been making this choice for years, right? So let, we can deepen this practice. Start moving back. There are certain foods that are still really close to wild. Right? The things that are still bitter, like dandelion. Like, what, you got burdock root in your stores? Mm -hmm. I've been buying that since I was here. Burdock root is very close to its wild plant, right? Very close. It's not the wild plant anymore, but it's very close. Right? You can go to your farmer's markets and get heirloom stuff. You can get, if you're a meat eater, what's a better choice, a cow or a bison? bison. bison. Much closer, right? Much closer. You can start to go on wild food walks. Who's been doing that? And start learning about what you can actually eat. Start harvesting some of that stuff. You can start to get together in communities. And I love the raw food potlucking thing and the vegan potlucking thing that we've been doing as a community for a long time. But I'm proposing and why I'm traveling around teaching right now is to say, hey, you guys want to go with me? Let's step it up a notch. Like, let's go like wild food potlucking. Why? Because if we don't do that, we're going to end up like the ORAC sterile and not knowing even where we came from. In fact, very few of us know where we came from. In fact, we've been all listening to this whole trip about the missing link. Like, it's like, oh, they're working on it. They're trying to figure out where we came from. We know where we came from. We came from indigenous people. We gotta start walk working our way backward. The local movement is amazing, but there's a term that's starting to come out in culture, instead of just local food, which can mean anything, can't it? It could be any breed of anything. There's a term, food shed. Who's heard watershed? And it's like, by the way, one of the things I'm going to be talking about at the fix tomorrow is water. And, and getting water from the watershed where you live, which is a practice like that you do, isn't it? Going to watersheds where you live and harvesting the spring water. There's a term, food shed. What comes from your food shed? What's actually from here? Because you can get local corn and you're still contributing to the absolute desecration of the earth. Does that make sense? You can buy local farm stuff and it's actually not helping anybody. So we've got to start looking for foods from our food sheds. We've got to start getting water out of our environment again. We've got to start rebuilding ourselves. We've got to start learning how to make food again. We've got to start learning how to use the herbs again and the medicines again and start rebuilding ourselves. We gotta start doing things outside that challenge our physical bodies to activate our DNA so that we don't become like the grays. <laughs> we gotta be really thoughtful about how we're living every day because we're poised on a strange pinnacle right now where our species might actually get extracted off the planet and live in spaceships or take our earth back, take our planet back. You might choose to go to the bathroom outside again. A couple times a year. <laughs> Why? Because we forgot how. You might go to springs and drink water out of the ground because we forgot how. We might go get food from outside because we forgot how. It's not just like, oh, this is the next level after you're ve vegetarian, or this is the next level after you're raw. It's like, this is what human beings need to do now. The situation's dire. We don't know our own planet anymore. And we keep trying, most of us feel in our heart that we want to be connected to the planet again, and we keep accepting surrogates like the health food store. It's like, oh, I feel like I'm not in nature. So we go to the health food store and everything in there feels kind of natural. So it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 
that? Oh, everything in here is like tan and green. <laughs> and the biggest thing is, is letting go of the illusion that our community has been holding about how nature works. Nature is beautiful. Nature is full of compassion. But nature calls every organism to be a warrior, or else it's quickly eliminated from the life cycle. In the wolf, the wolf has to be wild and ferocious. That's what we remove from it when we make it a dog. If you think about what makes your dog different than the wolf, it's that it's had its ferociousness <coughs> taken away. If you look at what our plants have become, they've had their poison taken away. I don't know what human beings have had taken away, but whatever it is allows us to be subjugated and controlled and forced into situations that make us feel disempowered. And as spiritual people, we've been convinced that the greatest, the greatest expression of our spirituality is to let it happen. That it's all good. Man. That's what's been taken away from women. Their ferociousness. I agree. Yeah, and their poison. <laughs> We've been domesticated. We've been domesticated. We've been domesticated and we've given it up and we've started to move more and more into a uh, politically correct, excessively passive people, and the brightest amongst us are the ones who buy into that the most because we want to do the right thing. The average person out there getting out of the bar drunk, beating some guy in the face, doesn't care about himself or anyone else, but we care. So we go around seeking out the information on how do people care at? <laughs> and we get all the spiritual books and we get the teachings and we're told how we should live. And those of us who could really affect change become extremely passive. By the way, there's wild people all over the planet still and there was many more. And they're all warrior cultures. And the people are strong. The people are strong. And we've become extremely, extremely Chihuahua lies. <laughs> so here's what I would say. Instead of coming at nutrition from, um, should I eat tomatoes? I heard they're a nightshade. <laughs> or like, do I sprout my quinoa first or just soak it? <laughs> or, oh, you guys know what I mean by that? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> there's value in approaching nutrition from that way, but the real thing we need to start approaching is, whoa, what are these foods we've even been choosing from? It's all wrong information. We gotta like walk right away from all that stuff that's in that produce section and start finding the real stuff again, piece by piece. When I got into raw foods, by the way, there was no superfood scene. There was no cacao beans around. There was no agave around. In fact, all there was around was like celery. You couldn't even get almond butter when I got into that stuff. Nothing. There was nothing. Now, I mean, it's like you go to a gas station and they're like, cacao nibs. <laughs> Kombucha. Okay, that happened because we created a market together for that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've been really challenged traveling, trying to find stuff that I can even eat anywhere, because it doesn't exist yet, but we can start to draw that stuff out. And we can do it with a new ethic, because if we're calling out wild stuff sustainably harvest, that means human beings are gonna to have to interact again with the natural world. I think we're gonna to get to a place where it's not even this whole product thing stops anyway. But in the meantime, you can start getting your farmers to grow new stuff. You can start getting your supermarkets to carry new stuff, your health food stores to carry new stuff. By just demanding it, and we'll see a big improvement. The thing that's valuable about that is it won't just be an improvement of like, oh, we're much healthier now. <laughs> it's going to be like, whoa, we're moving back towards our strength and claiming our planet back from whoever is the domesticator. 
we don't know who the domesticator actually is. So we have lots of cool books about it, websites, and is it the reptilians? Is it the greys? Is it the masons? <laughs> who is it? Like, is it us? <laughs> We're all one. Whatever it is. <laughs> I think about it a lot. It's like, I can see it from every angle, but there's a domesticator, and the, the bottom line is we give power to it. And that's how we got domesticated. And if we're going to see real justice on this planet, it's not from burning factory farms down and you know, shutting down McDonald's. It's from stopping the domestication of living creatures. And that's going to stop first with domesticating ourselves. That's the conclusion of the talk. <laughs> um,